Welcome to SVG TV News for Wednesday, September 23, 2015. I'm Lafren Fraser with the details. Minister of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Information Technology Camilo Gonzalez says that in this technological age where incentions are vulnerable to human trafficking, it is critical and imperative that all stakeholders begin the conversation that ultimately erases any trace of human trafficking from society. Gonzalez was at the time addressing the opening ceremony of a two-day training workshop geared at sensitizing and equipping critical stakeholders, namely first responders, prosecutors and law enforcement officers to effectively deal with and respond to issues of human trafficking in SVG, hosted by the RSVG Police Force under the theme, Introduction to Human Trafficking. Minister Gonsav says human trafficking is a very serious issue that has the ability to negatively impact the Vincentian society and economy by depriving the country of its very important human resources. And everybody in this room has a special responsibility to combat human trafficking and to look for it, to seek it out, to eliminate it. There are criminals involved that must be dealt with to the fullest extent of the law. But there are also victims involved who must be assisted, who must be protected, who must be counseled, who must be helped. There are children involved who must be educated and taught how to spot the sort of traps that human traffickers lay, particularly in this technological age. Every year, the United States government releases a trafficking in persons report which lists this country for a number of years as one that does not fully comply with the minimum standards for the elimination of human trafficking. In reference to the report, Minister Gonsalves says that the U.S. government is misinformed about the situation in SVG. Gonsalves furthermore urged the participants of the workshop, particularly the police officers, to remain vigilant and to continue to put up a no-entry sign to people who want to make this country a base for human trafficking. All of the plots and schemes that come up on the internet to rob you of your money are also being used to rob people of their freedom and their virtue and, and their innocence. And we have to always be on guard against these sorts of things. One instance of human trafficking in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is one too many. We must continue our good work. We must continue to be educated. We must continue to be aggressive in trying to stamp it out wherever we may find it. And we must not let ourselves be discouraged or pulled down by episodic reports by people who don't know the reality in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and may not even be interested in the reality in St. Vincent and the Grenadines because they have other motives. I know you're all doing a good job. I want you to continue so to do. I want to applaud the very hard work of Superintendent Jacobs in leading this fight and Commissioner Charles. Station Sergeant Junior Simmons says SVG has to implement a better strategy to deal with instances of human trafficking so that the authorities can stay ahead of the human traffickers. And the commencement of this today training program is ample evidence of this fact. Human trafficking is organized crime. The traffickers are very organized in their effort and intent to exploit the most vulnerable of victims and to profit excessively from their criminal activities. Therefore, it will take a better organized and strategic approach by all stakeholders to come to the traffickers and to bring them to justice. This is the main essence of this training session, which takes place here over the next two days. And officer in charge of the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Unit, Superintendent of Police Ruth Jacobs says the unit continues to work tirelessly to raise awareness of this issue of human trafficking, as well as to identify and assist in the prosecution of human trafficking cases here in SVG. Addressing the 60 police officers and other stakeholders participating in the training workshop, Superintendent Jacobs urges them to take all the knowledge and experience gained and use it for the protection and betterment of the nation. Since the formation of the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Unit, this unit has endeavored vigorously to carry out its mandate by 
partnering with key stakeholders, both governmental and non-governmental, to sensitization, and in some cases, train institutions and organizations, namely students in schools, teachers, ministries, parents, senior citizens, the Coast Guard Service, Customs and Excise, the Red Cross, the Commission of Police and Gazetted Officers of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force, Health Centers, Immigration Department, Churches. We also publish newspaper articles in human trafficking and participated in radio calling programs on our many radio stations in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. High Court Judge Justice Kathy Ann Lachu, who is presently presiding over the sitting of the criminal session, has raised concern over the non-availability of a psychiatrist here to do mental evaluations on persons who are before the court on murder-related charges. She raised this concern on Tuesday, September 22, 2015, at the commencement of the criminal session, when several accused appeared before her to be arraigned. Lachu stated that she cannot put the accused on trial until the doctor gives a report with regard to the mental state of the person at the time the crime was committed. President of the SVG Bar Association, Renee Batiste, who was in court at the time, was called upon by the judge to use her good office to see what can be done to have a psychiatrist appointed in the public service. Member of Parliament for South Central Windward, Saboto Caesar, is calling on the members of the opposition to be more patriotic. Caesar made this call while giving support to the bill for the approval of funds for the Argyle International Airport project in Parliament on Monday. According to Caesar, the opposition has been sidetracking from the real issues while playing on the concerns of the people over the completion date of the multi million dollar project. Members of the opposition are trying to play on the anxiety of some citizens and are uh, shaping a discussion and an argument around a point of the completion date. But Mr. Speaker, completion dates for anyone who would have visited the Arab International Airport in recent times. We are fully aware even from an untrained eye, an untrained eyes, that the Argyle International Airport is going to be completed and it is going to be completed. Caesar says the politicking of the opposition by also putting fear into the minds of the people about the debt being accumulated cannot be compared to the benefits that will come from having an international air facility. And this can only be fostered by minds that are not focused on thrift and industry and the utilization of this important project to create the types of economic spill-offs that it can create and will create under the unity of the It was noted that some persons are using the project on an issue of good politics, politicking on the issue. Well, there are many citizens who are convinced that the Argyle International Airport or an international airport in St. Vincent and the Grenadines could not have been built by any other government and if they so desire to say, well, we are going to vote for the Unity Labour Party because they embarked on such a massive project, and other governments could not do it quite so yet. And the opposition member of parliament for West Kingstown, Daniel Cummings, is calling on the ruling Unity Labour Party or the ULP government to discuss the real issues of having an international airport. Cummings says that when criticism is given, it is not to be negative, but it is in the hope of easing the squeeze that the country is facing because of reckless spending.
Cummings says the opposition New Democratic Party, the NDP, operates under guidelines to carry out projects properly and that he could not support more funding for the Argyle International Airport project as there is no credible documentation about how the monies are being spent. In more local news, a shipment of building materials, including toilets and sinks worth 4.5 million EC dollars, arrived here in St. Vincent yesterday, which Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsal says is solely for the Ministry of Housing to distribute to the needy. Prime Minister Gonsal says that he is happy to be able to hand over the materials to the Ministry of Housing, knowing that his administration will be able to assist the people of SVG that were affected by natural disasters from Tomas to the most recent, adding that it is a known fact that that there are numerous persons who still live with the aftermath of these disasters. We provide and we still provide in for two important programs which we have devised. One is the program for the lives to live. The other is the program to assist in the rehabilitation after the natural disasters. And a lot of people who comfortably sit in their homes, who are not involved in the management of this matter, do not sufficiently appreciate the extent of the damage that people have suffered from Pumas come right up. And you have to be dealing with these on an ongoing basis. NEMO is important in assessing, but so too the Ministry of Housing. These materials are not for Housing and Land Development Corporation. These materials are for the Ministry of Housing. In other words, these are not materials to be used in the low-income housing project. The Prime Minister furthermore thanked the Jamaican company Tankweld, one of the largest manufacturers and traders of building materials, for supplying the country with the materials, which he says will be paid for in 12-month installments through the funds from Petro-Carib. Dr. Gonsalves says he considers the materials gained from this purchase to be very reasonably priced and that they will go to very good use. To buy, to get these materials to help people, credit for such a long period of time with good competitive prices is very generous. The local suppliers, some of them will give you a month, some will give you three months, some will give you four months credit. And we still have outstanding credit and we can get more credit from Eastern Caribbean Metals, which is the which produces galvanized and also from bronze which produce which produces galvanized and from other suppliers we buy other materials too these materials are largely lumber cement galvanized plywood some household um, uh, Features like the, the toilets, the kitchen sink, the kitchen sink and, 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 and so on. 
The Prime Minister also points out that the shipment of building materials is not an election gimmick, but a part of the Ministry of Housing's policy of fulfilling its mandate of taking care of the needy. Prime Minister Gonsalves noted that it is a basic human right that the government is fulfilling, that everyone has a shelter despite their political beliefs. This is something very joyous. This is not an election gimmick, because we have been doing it in election season and out of election season. It's a policy. Because election is coming on, we must stop the policy. The policy must go and strike or go slow. Deserving people, poor people and others. Not to tell them, well, here now, you see this policy of in housing? We stop in this policy in housing. We wait until the election is over because we don't want one or two internet crazies and the opposition to say, government bribing people with, with, with materials. If I any nonsense like that, you could bribe people with materials. That's what they think of people. And we don't distribute on the basis of political allegiances. We distribute on the basis of need. The Bokamant Bay Secondary School is celebrating its 10th anniversary under the theme Celebrating a Collaborative Approach to Education, Preparing Effectively to Enable Tomorrow's Generation. In recognition of the occasion, a church service was held earlier today at the school compound, which heard addresses from various persons, including two teachers who have been with the school from its inception, Sherry Short and Wade Jackson, who gave a brief history of the school which was founded in 2005. They outlined that the school started with four Form 1s of 132 students, many of whom did not pass common entrance, and that of the 132, only 24 students made it to CSEC level and did commendably well considering they had not passed common entrance. Short and Jackson also boasted of the school's achievements in co-curricular and extracurricular activities. They also boasted that the staff has moved from a number of 5 to 22 and that the current student population is now at 335. The Buckman Bay Secondary School was founded in 2005 primarily to accommodate the unusually large number of students to be placed in secondary schools in the South Leeward District. This stemmed from the fact that in that year the government embarked on a new policy in education referred to as universal access to secondary education. This meant that for the first time, every child who had attained the age of 12 and over was to be provided the opportunity to attend a secondary school regardless of his or her performance on the national common entrance examination. The school commenced operation on September 5, 2005. The staff consisted of the principal, Honorable Maxwell Charles, and four teachers with three more added during the first few weeks of school. Chief Education Officer Luann Gilchrist was at the service and she urged students to appreciate the existence of the school and encourage the parents to continue to give support to the school, which was one of three to be established in 2005 as a part of the education revolution. Gilchrist told the students to recognize that pre-primary, primary and secondary education are only the basics and a platform for further studies as well as lifelong learning. She reminded them that the school is viewed as an establishment of distinction and that they must play their part to uphold this by attending school every day and being on time as well as attentive. Your school is viewed as an establishment of distinction. Educational services are provided to all in this nation on an egalitarian basis. You at Bokamet Bay Secondary School do not have any less than any other student at any other school. It is true that conditions might not always be ideal, but in every school there are challenges. And the extent to which these challenges are overcome is the measure of your dedication and the measure of your commitment to success. Students are enjoying you to conceive of great Things, great feats, great accomplishments, great achievements for yourselves because your motto says what the mind can conceive we can achieve.
you are no less than any other student. The principal of the school also addressed the gathering and encouraged the parents to support their children, emphasizing that teachers cannot do everything on their own. She told them to be mindful of what they say to children as the tongue is a powerful weapon. Past student Alex Burnett reminisced on what it was like as one of the first students of the Bookerman Secondary School here is what he had to say. My journey started here at the Bookerman B Secondary School. I can remember like it was yesterday. The Bookerman B Secondary School had now opened its doors for the first time. As a student in those days, the challenges were mounting us. For example, there were constant clutter due to ongoing construction on some parts of the building. This created an unconduced environment for learning. Also, my school was un under constant criticism from members of the public who believe nothing good will ever come of the school. I can only describe these people as pessimistic persons with no vision who can't see past their own line of thought. To hear comments of that nature weighed me down. But nevertheless, as a student, I pressed on because I had all the motivation I needed. I was blessed with strong, dedicated, positive, and hardworking teachers. They, along with my clearance, gave me all the guidance and tools needed to be successful throughout the entire secondary school life. Show's coordinator Pearl Williams has been appointed as director of the Caribbean delegation of the Miss Heritage World pageant. The appointment was made last week and Williams says she is elated to be entrusted with such a position. In an interview with SVG TV News, Williams says Gabriel Gunsam will be representing this country in the upcoming Miss Heritage pageant. She says the nurse who resides in the UK has to do a piece showcasing St. Vincent and the Grenadines and prepare a local dish. The show will be held in South Africa on November 15th 2015 and William says along with Gun Sam she will be accompanied by local artist Damien Lightning Zeus Blackwood. To see that most of the ambassadors and everybody's associated with this very pageant, it is a world pageant. I am so fortunate and honored to receive that um, that letter of appointment and it was done last week. And uh, so I am taking the artist with me as well as Miss St. Vincent. We do have five contestants from the Caribbean who will be going under our leadership. And they made a general word and call it um, Miss Heritage Caribbean. So all the Caribbean countries, I mean, will be going at like one big delegation to Africa. And that is on the 14th of, um, 14th of November. So my artist would be going. I say my artist because I would like to make sure that his wings is out there flying and flying the flag of St. Vincent. And so when he start flying, we just allow him to continue flying with his wings. But just to have that input to take him out there, I'm very much interested. Blackwood says he has been doing music with some of the biggest local producers and he's pleased that his career seems to be bouncing back. The Jamaican born who has resided in this country for some time says some of his tracks are being played on regional and international radio. Sometimes, you know, when you try, it never works out, you pause and come back again. I mean, but I started officially one year now, and it's good look. It's a good look. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I did a project for um, Serena Records, Mark Cyrus, um, Elvis as Fourth Dimension, and have have a song right now, a project doing with um, the Angel right now. She makes me a celebrity overnight. Miss Pearl Williams, thank you very much. Because, you know what I mean, it come like my career was lost without her. You know, and just every time you're on the verge of giving up, you know what I mean? Well, it was reaching there, you know, and she, she, she just heard my music and, and I sang for her, which this is the song right now that is running the place for a crime music group. He's in America and he got the song to be playing in England. Blackwood is also encouraging other artists to never give up on their dreams. He also gave SVG TV News a sample of his talent. And if you're not, if, if you're not dead, <laughs> if you have the opportunity for you to keep on trying again. Yeah, man. So keep on trying. Whether you have education or not, keep on trying. The passion is within. Can I beat them when I give them beer box if you clean the house? Take out the trash, take out the trash, make sure the plates wash. Cause she will beat him, she will beat him twice. Beat him there and beat him night. She will beat him, beat him twice. Beat him there and beat him night. <laughs> 